Welcome to today's podcast interview. I've brought on Alita Morrill. Alita, welcome. Thank you so much. In our pre-call, you know, we totally speak the same language. For But for those that are new to you, please give a little background. Where do you live and what do you do? Okay. I live in Allen, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. And a little background, I worked over 40 years in corporate America and retired in 2008. And in 2009, I started on a journey that opened up my awareness. And so now I say I graduated from corporate America. I didn't retire. So um, I'm an energy coach. And so I help people. And the best way to say it is get rid of their bad juju, right? So anything that's blocking them from achieving the life that they really want to live. Okay. So this is a language we both know, but can we start at square one? Can you kind of explain energy 101? Energy 101 is very simple. Everything in our world is energy. You know, the notebook on your desk, your phone, um, everything in your home is energy. It's in a form that you see. The real stickler here is that there's energies that we don't see. They can be anything. They can be spirits, right? They can be thoughts because every thought you think creates an energy in the room. I clear more. I call those thought forms than about anything. We just clear those things up. Have you ever walked in a room and it felt like stale energy? Yep. What that was. (laughs) I'm curious. Do you do any smudging? I don't smudge and I'll tell you why early in my journey, I smudged. Okay. But I recognize that maybe an hour later, all of a sudden it doesn't feel good anymore. So I taught myself a way to clear the energy that I don't have to smudge. Okay. So, um, well, I'll teach it to you. Want us to want me to do that? (laughs) Yes. But two seconds for anyone who's new to that smudging is something I learned years ago. And for me, I just believe Anything is a tool, whatever works for you, use it. You know, like I'm not super into astrology and horoscopes, but they're kind of fun to read. Smudging is simply burning sage and supposedly burning of the sage can help release energies. And so like you said, I'm just going to give an example of something I did years ago. After my broken engagement, I had moved out of that house. You, I mean, it was very still energy. It was a brand new home that sat vacant. We tried to sell it for four months. But with like kind of that spiritual knowing and background, I took a friend with me and I worked downtown. We drove to it and we went and smudged the home to and opened windows to release that funk. And the house was under contract and sold in two weeks. Perfect. I know. But now you and, and sometimes I still do it. It's just kind of a release. And if it feels good, awesome. If not, you know, that might not be your thing. But what were you going to share? I'm going to share a way to clear where where you don't have to stop and smudge because we can't smudge all the time. Right. I love the smell of smudging. And I think we need to do it every so often. And if you don't know about it, find out about it. You know, enhance your life, right? But I'm going to teach you that as what I'm holding here is my Kevlar net. All right. So Lita's Kevlar net. It's made of Kevlar fabric, which is used in racing sailboats. And it's infused with crystalline energy, kryptonite, everything I could think of. The the energy of the Madagascar spider, right? Well, it spins beautiful gold thread. I have the energy of the Cambodian fabric that they use for bulletproof clothing. So over the years, which has been since 2009, I have added to it. So you can use this net. What I do to clear something, so I'm going to clear my phone. I wrap it around hold all the four ends. If I'm holding my phone, I pull it through the phone, grab the end, which has the non-beneficial energy, and I release it to the light. It's all done with intention, right? Mm. So when you're you're saging a home, you're intending to clear the energy that's non-beneficial. So Mm. when I'm clearing something, I'm intending that the the energies be released. And so if I'm going to clear a home, in my palm, I shrink the home down into the size of a pea through through visualization, and I run the net through it, and I'm done. 
And it's a beautiful way to clear people, <laughs> clear rooms, phone, telephones are always full of energies that we would like to release. So there is you this go. An, is it an imaginary net? Like you're using imagination and visualization yep. and oh, that's it. Okay. Yes. That's why okay. I'm holding it. Can you see it? Yeah, I can. Cause I'm imagining it. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now I love that you bring this up. Um, I watched a video on Jim quick. I'm new to him, but Jim quick. Uh, mm -hmm. It was like a 10 minute video talking and everybody has said this, but I love the way he explained it, mm -hmm. that everything is imagination. We think in forms of images and pictures. You know, when I say a blue car, you see an image of a blue car. You don't see the word C-A-R. And mm -hmm. so you are visualizing and intending this. Something mm -hmm. else that you brought up before we kind of got into clearing energy was, you know, from a science standpoint, science explains that everything is 99 point a bunch of numbers, empty space. Yes. And although everything looks solid, it's not. And I love Nikola Tesla's quote. If okay. you want to understand the secrets of the universe, you have to think in terms of energy, frequency, vibration. Yes. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. can Absolutely. You, yeah. Can you take it from there and now explain, because you, you touched on it, but our thoughts are energy and our thoughts are manifesting or creating every experience in our life. Can you go down that rabbit hole? I'll go down that rabbit hole. Absolutely. So let's say somebody comes in the house and they're really, really angry. Well, that puts angry energy in your house. Mm. That doesn't feel good, right? But if they come in and they're just, honey, I missed you. And let's say it's your spouse and, and, and hearts are coming out of them and love that puts beautiful energy. So energy isn't just bad energy. Energy is good energy, right? So it's what we want our house to feel like, what we want, even if we're driving in our car, don't we want to always feel good? Don't we want to always feel good every day of every life? Well, the more, the more positive energy we express in thoughts, in words, the more we're going to create the positive energy around us. So that's I, yes, I want to clarify because um, I mean, I've been studying this stuff for years, but maybe somebody who's newer to this, we are not talking about toxic positivity or positive woo-woo. We are literally saying. And if we want to go from like that scientific standpoint that your thoughts and emotions create your own energetic vibe, aura, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I like to explain it that life is a boomerang. What we put out via our thoughts and emotions, we are simply bringing it back. So what you put out, you get back. I know a lot of people talk about karma as yeah. though it's bad, right? Like you did something bad, something bad's going to come back to you. No, I, I believe karma is it's the law of um not vibration or reciprocity but what comes out what goes out comes back right right absolutely i mean there's no question you've explained it you've explained it very well i think of what we put out there is what is okay so it's what is our life all, all about right so I know you're really big on the power of self-awareness. And I truly believe that the first step to creating any change in your life. So whether you want to change your mindset, your financials, your health, your relationships, your happiness, mm -hmm. you have to first become aware. But I would love for you to explain what that means to you, this idea of self-awareness. Self-awareness. So, um, so many times we walk around in a fog or we're not sensitive to other people and, or we're even focusing just on ourselves. But I like to think of self-awareness in being an expansion of ourselves. Mm. And so we're, when we're self-aware, we're not only aware of what we feel, but what impact we have on other people. Okay. I'm very aware of that because I am fortunate enough. Um, I live with uh, in a merged home with my daughter, son-in-law, and three grandchildren, and I am very aware of, from a self-awareness perspective, of who I am, how it impacts the other members of the family, and so it's like we can think of our self-awareness being somehow contained 
in our auric field, but man, there's energy feelers out there that are constantly impacting other people. And guess what? I choose that, right? I choose that my positive vibe will spill over on my daughter, on my granddaughter, right? That kind of thing. So um, self-awareness to me is that feeling of knowing what every step of the way and every day, what, what is going to, what is going to come from that? I love the idea. And I think I heard it from Dr. Joe Dispenza. I don't know if he is the one to quote it, but Mm -hmm. you know, he really teaches that learn to um, influence the energy of a room. Yes. And I, you know what, I truly remember doing this back in corporate. I quit in 2017, but before then I worked in, it felt like a very toxic environment. It was oil and gas. Um, it's very, they weren't people driven and, and I don't think anybody felt appreciated or acknowledged. And so the vibe, if we want to talk energy, the yep. vibe was very low in that office building. Mm-hmm. And I chose, and I truly think it is an innate thing, but I chose I was that one walking around down the hallways. I was an office manager and and did some HR stuff, but I would walk down the hallways giving high fives because Mm -hmm. that alone, you know, like even just that touch, like that made people feel good. In my office, I had on the top of my whiteboard, have an attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. And I, I did my best to make it light, to make it fun. You know, if you're going to spend 40 plus hours a week at a place you don't love, why are you wasting your life? Oh boy, isn't that the truth? Isn't now, that the- it it's not always easy, but the one thing we always have control of is ourself. Right. We, we can't control our spouse or roommates or mm-hmm. traffic or the government or your boss. Right. So when it comes to the idea of self-awareness and understanding energy and thoughts, do you have any tools or anything you'd like to teach around the idea of how to regulate our thoughts and emotions? Um I have my favorite tool. I'm feeling like I should be bringing it up right now. Okay. My favorite tool is the one command. Have you ever heard of it? No. Okay. The one command is based on a book titled The One Command by Sara Lovejoy. All right. And I teach it to every one of my clients, their first visit. All right. So it, it, the reason for the tool is it makes you think about what you want not what you don't want, okay? So many people think about what they don't want and wonder why it happens over and over again. Yeah. So the tool goes like this. I'll use a, I'll use my favorite one command that I created like back in 2009. It's that I don't know how, and I'm going to tell you, everyone starts with that. And that statement bypasses your beta brain because your beta brain says you're right. You don't know how. Okay. So the one command immediately eliminates fear, doubt, and worry. You say, I don't know how, but guess what? Don't isn't heard by God. That's pretty cool. He thinks he hears a grand level of confidence. So the next part is your statement, like would be your affirmation. So I don't know how I arrive safely and on time. Okay. I only know I do now present tense as though it's already happened. You add um, a thank you and a blessing. So, and I am grateful and fulfilled. All right. So that's the one command I created because I had a bad habit of looking at my watch before I left the house and going, Oh, I'm going to be late. Mm -hmm. Well, I was late. Okay. So I started this one command. I don't know how I arrived safely and on time. I only know I do now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I promise you the freeway angels came out, the green light fairies came out and I was magically wherever I needed to be perfectly on time. If it was be- if it was past the appointment time, they weren't ready for me. So we can do one commands like, I don't know how I nail that job interview. I only know I do now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I don't know how I wear a perfect size 10. I am a perfect size 10. I only know I am now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. I don't know how I have financial stability. 
I only know I do now, and I'm grateful and fulfilled. So it opens a whole new world because if you have fear on a subject, you normally keep thinking about what you're afraid of, all right? But in this case, you create a one command and you you sail past the fear and you can start manifesting. Um, the one command is a beautiful tool. And in the book, it, it explains um, there's something called a one command meditation. And um, the meditation is is very long. It's, well, it's pretty long. But in the middle of it, you read your one commands. So it puts you on the super highway to manifestation. And it's amazing what happens. It's a great tool. Well, you know, I have not heard that before. And th I think there's tons of variations. As an example, Bob Proctor, his statement is, I am so happy and grateful now that, and you fill in the blank with the condition mm -hmm. that you desire. And I do love yours saying, I don't know how, because I, the mind gets so hung up on I, what you were saying, I believe with the beta brain waves is we analyze right. and we're trying to be logical and, and we can only do that from a very limited perspective. Yes. From past it, experiences. Yes. It brings, I mean, everybody that I deal with, when I tell them this, we're going to use, I'm going to teach you a tool to get rid of your stinking thinking. Right. Ah. So after I, I go through a clearing for an individual, I don't want them to bring the energies back. I need yeah. them to think differently. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I know there's so much going through my mind right now. And I, and I love that. And this is a, I use it. Do you use this as a daily intention? Um, I actually, since doing this so long, I think in terms of one commands, mm. I don't know how, I don't know what I'll cook for dinner. Okay. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly every, every moment of every day, I think in terms of one commands because it gets me what I want. So it's a habit now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you trained your mind through consistency and repetition, which is, yes, you know, <clears throat> what I call building the mindset muscle. Yes. And, and ultimately it is, you know, my word for this year is unwavering faith because I have found well, I just like having that one word, well, that phrase, because it is so easy to fall back into self-doubt, worry, fear, anxiety, all of those low vibe emotions. And when we're emanating from that, like the boomerang, self-fulfilling mm -hmm. prophecy, we get more of the same definition of insanity, mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over, expecting new results. And so we're offering, you know, I call this kind of like mental discipline. Mm -hmm. Um. And somebody recently on the podcast was like, I don't like the term discipline. That seems to, and I'm like, okay, well, it's semantics. Call whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. exactly. What would you consider? Like you have now stepped into a new way of thinking and being, right? Mm -hmm. What would you, you know, I think other terms to call this is living intentionally, living mindfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you call this? Well, it is living intentionally. Okay. I think setting intention is about the most important thing we can do in any part of our life. Okay. So yeah. we, we get up in the morning and we set intention as to what the day is going to be. Every day is beautiful for me. I don't have a bad day. I don't have a bad day anymore. I don't because I set intention as to what is going to be. And I look forward to everything I do, including cleaning the cat boxes, right? I don't, you know, there's nothing that I do is disappointing or, oh man, I got to do that. So it's like, let's get it done and move on to the next thing. So I do that not only with my one commands that are there with my thinking, but by first setting intention as to what I want anything and everything to be. And I think that is the most, <laughs> it's most important. Well, and I love that. And that's practice. And do you know, I didn't realize how many people were in this space, but I have found that most people don't even know what they want. And my whole thing is if you don't know what you want, or if you don't know where you're going, how will you ever get there? And right. so what I call this is living life by design or by default. When you're living mm -hmm. in autopilot, going through the motion, same shit, different day. Yes. That's autopilot. A lot of people are living that way. 
And, but those who are listening and watching this, they know better, right? Like ultimately we are teaching, you know, it is being a conscious creator of your reality. Um, Yes. Oh, this is what I wanted to say on what you had just said. I literally released a video, maybe it was like two days ago. And it was, again, this small mindset shift, I believe brings big changes in your life. And the small mindset shift is this. Rather than complaining, I have to do laundry, I have to pick up the kids, I have to make dinner, I, ha- I have to go to the gym, mm-hmm. I have to go to work. The small mindset shift I use is I get to. Yeah, that's good. And because you're now replacing resentment or frustration with a, an mm-hmm. gratitude. Like, I have the facilities that I get to do my laundry. You know, I have food in the fridge. I get to make dinner. I have children. I I don't have children, but I have children I love that I get to pick up. You know, there's so many people experiencing infertility. And I think it's just that small shift. I get to go to the gym. I get to wake. I got, I woke up today. Yes, exactly. And, and along that lines, I'm going to give you a little example of kind of going through something very similar as I was teaching the first class of a course in awareness. So I teach a course in awareness. It's five classes. It helps people go, you know, master their awareness journey. Okay. And I taught the first class on Sunday and, and I started talking about one of the things I love to do is cook dinner. And so one of the students said, Oh, I don't like to cook. It's just so bad. So I said, Okay. So I ran over, I I was teaching in my home. And so I ran over, I got my planning list. I got my meal plan, my shopping list. I got everything out. And I said, let me tell you how I do it. She says, I get ready to cook something and I don't have an ingredient. I said, okay. So I taught her in about less than five minutes to meal plan, find recipes you want to cook, meal plan, set the grocery list and then go shopping. Okay, but have your meals planned. And after the class, she answered back the next day and sent me a message that it really worked, that she went out and found some recipes she liked to cook, meal planned, went to grocery list. And so there's an awful lot that we want to supplement setting intention into processes. Okay. Yeah. I feel really strongly that if our life is without process, It's kind of willy nilly. All right. And so it's good to have patterns. It's good to have a plan. It's good to keep the kitchen counter cleared. You know what I'm saying? Those mail stacks, that's stuck energy. Did you know that? You have a big stack of mail on the counter. Yes. It's creepy stuff. So, so we want to keep our, our life clutter free um, processes in place. And then everything everything can then flow. Your intention can do something. So yeah, we're releasing the uh, kink. You know what I love that you just brought up? So I I do monthly rituals with the new moon and the full moon. And part Mm -hmm. of that is decluttering your space. But you know what I have found with my coaching clients when they kind of do have that mental chaos and, Mm -hmm. and I can just, I literally can feel the chaotic (laughs) energy and I straight ask them and I've done this multiple times Uh and I'm like, what's your office look like? You're like, Oh my God, it's a mess papers everywhere. And I was like, I can tell you're so disorganized internally. Of course you're disorganized externally. And even that small shift cleaning up a spare bedroom, cleaning up their office, creating organization externally, obviously creates that organization internally. Yes. Something I wanted to ask about that example you gave about the meal prep. Yes. Was it potentially a feeling of overwhelm? And so when you're feeling overwhelmed that you don't even start, like, you you know, you got her to step by step. Yes. Yes. She was totally overwhelmed. Yeah. I, the reason I went and got my my process out to show her because it's so gosh darn simple. Yeah. If, you, if you put that process in place, get the recipes out, plan what the meals are going to be, and then create the grocery list. Yeah. You'll never be without an ingredient. It, well, and I've had. It doesn't take a lot of time either. <laughs> I and well, I love cooking, but I love eating. You know what yes. I found with even some of my girlfriends, you know, like, oh, I'm a terrible cook. I'm a terrible bake. And I literally ask, can you read? That's mm-hmm. literally it's I mean, yes, it's learning timing, but it's truly can you read? Can you follow a recipe? Yes. 
So I, even that, that, that is a great example of how we talk ourselves out of things, feeling overwhelmed or, you know, those disempowering thoughts and we latch onto them when yep. I, I'll give an example. I love this idea, right? Like how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Exactly. Mm-hmm. But again, a client of mine lives in an apartment, really wants to buy his first home. And he's mm-hmm. actually in Denver and cost of living's here through the roof. And he's like, I think I need to save $80,000. So I love your one command. But even on that note, I was like, okay, if 80 grand feels overwhelming, why don't you save your first thousand? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then mm-hmm. once, how do you run a marathon? One step at a time. Absolutely, right? One mile at a time. You just get it on. So, so his one command could be, I don't know how, I save for my house in $1,000 increments. Okay. I only know I do now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. That's cool. (laughs) Chunk it down. That's what I got out of that. Chunk it down. Yes, yes, yes. I wanted to ask you, what are some of your daily rituals, whether it's in the morning or evening or anytime, what are daily rituals you are doing to stay intentional and mindful and self-aware? My favorite ritual is what I do in bed before I put my head on, as I put my head on the pillow. I call it the best thing. I've morphed what I read by um, Rhonda Byrne in her third book, The Magic, and it's called The Best Thing, okay? So when you put your head on your pillow, start, don't think about the problems, don't think about what issues you have to solve, don't think about what you didn't do during the day. Think about what you are most grateful for. So what was the best thing that happened during the day? All right. So I lay there and I think through the day and well, was it this or was it this? And so I think through all of the items that happened and things that happened in the day and I pick, well, that was the best thing. Hmm. If I'm still awake, what I start thinking about is I wonder what the best thing will be tomorrow. So I go through my day inspecting hmm. it. Who are my clients? Am I going to any stores? I love to go to Trader Joe's. I love to go to Costco because I do the meal planning and the shopping for my family. Okay, so I start thinking about, well, what will be the best thing tomorrow? And I'm typically by that time asleep, all right? And I say thank you for it ahead of time. So when I wake up in the morning, I have been amazed at how my mind immediately goes to, What's on my schedule today? What's going to be so cool? I wonder what the best thing will be. So it puts me, first of all, the gratitude. There's nothing more than having a moment in time where we just stop to be grateful, okay? But the other thing is let's make best things all day long, right? So it starts me on the best foot when I get out of bed. I'm already thinking about it. So I'd say that's my go-to tool. I do one commands all day long. But I really love that tool. I love that. That's something new. You said it a couple things. Um, I'm sorry. You said it a couple times. And so I want to emphasize why this is important. So mm-hmm. whether it's your one command or whatever, you have mentioned the idea of ahead of time, like it's mm-hmm. already done. Can you yes. please explain why it's important to have that clear intention and then the belief it's already done? Right, right. So the universe, whether it's God, however you look at life is so important. And the first thing I want to say is that I guess I pray, but once I realize that every thought, every word I have is heard by God, there's really not a time for prayer, right? I'm praying all day long, right? Every thought is heard. And every thought I have is going to manifest. So what I'm finding is that even things that are going to happen in the future, I want to think of them now as already done. And that that's what's going out into the universe so that it mirrors back to me. Okay. So I truly believe that, that if we state, I don't know how my house is sold, I only know it is now and I'm grateful and fulfilled. Number one takes away the fear of, am I going to sell it or not? Is anyone going to buy it? Okay. All that chatter takes it away. Okay. And it sets it out there that my house is sold. 
right? And so I feel like I, I have this, this kind of visualization that God and all my angels, they're out there, you know, creating synchronicities to get someone there to buy my house. And I thank them for that. Hey, thanks, guys. Okay. I'm very casual when I pray, when, when, with this connection I have to God. And so um, I feel like they're just my team out there. And so I'm constantly feel like I need to feed them present tense already happened because that's what I want back. I want to share a couple of other ways I've heard this same thing said, because I think it's, I like hearing many perspectives, Yes. but on the note, what you just shared, I first learned about Neville Goddard only a couple of years ago. Oh gosh. Okay. I know. Right. I'm like, how did I make it this far in personal development and never hear about Neville? But anyway, Neville teaches to live from the end rather than thinking of the end. So you don't put oh, up a vision that. board and be like, one day, I hope that would be nice. Yes. Here's another way um, Dr. Joe Dispenza always explains it, that we don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to vibes and energy and vibration and frequency. That gave you, me goosebumps. <laughs> right? If you're, if you're thinking of your desire and already feeling the gratitude, the love, connection, the joy, that end emotion. Right. You are now literally a vibrational match. And then that's when you let go of the how. And it mm -hmm. literally, I i mean, we've all had crazy fun. I love doing this stuff. I do yeah. it all the time. Right. But then it comes to you. You're not manic manifesting, trying to make something happen. Now, right. your idea of praying all day, Dispenza's daughter, when she was 15, now she taught him this. After this cool manifestate, manifesting experiment she did, she's like, well, dad, I just wake up as though my prayers are already answered. That's lovely. It's done. Yes. Okay. Final, final idea of how I explain this. I, I had a conversation with my cousin the last couple of weeks. She's a mom of five busy mom. Yeah. And so, you know, she's like, I think for us, some things are easier than others based on our belief system. Right. Mm -hmm. And the stories and money and whatever. But my idea to her, I was like, all right, think of it like this. When you have your clear intention, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, I was like, you know, when you go on Amazon and you type in the search bar, the thing you want, and you put it in your cart and then you check out and you let go, mm -hmm. you're not worrying about who's going to package it, how it's going to get shipped, who's mm -hmm. going to deliver it. And when you place your order and you let go. Yes. Yes. I love that. That's right? so cool. Yes. We just make, I feel like we make life way too complicated and it's really not. No, it's really not. And that brings up something else I want to share. Yeah. Because I think everybody can do this is that I never, ever worry about how something is going to get done. I don't anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore. I don't try to think through and solve problems. So let's say I need to figure out how in the world I'm going to get 15 things done in a day and da, 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 da. I don't think about it. I just say, what, how I want the day to unfold. So I want all 15 things done. Um, so guide me. And then I just wait, I get intuitive hits. Um, I, I sometimes I'm driving, I get a hit to take a different road. So I do. Um, and ultimately, I am so I am guided in my day, because I set intention of what I want. But the middle part of that is that I don't solve the problem. I don't, I don't even bother my mind with it because I know they'll help me. So why should I try to think about how I'm going to solve that problem? It gets solved for me. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I'd love, can you give one example of maybe something recently or one of your quote, big things that you manifested but can you just share like the fun of this and I love putting people on experiments or with a takeaway like mm -hmm. go put this into play don't just listen right. to this right okay so I'm gonna share um I'm gonna go ahead and share that my daughter is uncomfortable when my son comes to visit okay it's my house too so I should be able to have him visit whenever I want and one day I was a little tired and I thought you know, um, 
um, my, my son was coming over to pick something up and the normal thing. So I was too tired to deal with them. Okay. So uh, he was coming over to, to pick something up. And typically he comes at dinner time, maybe with his son and they stay for dinner. No problem. But I just didn't feel like dealing with it, dealing with the stress and so I say, I started thinking about how this is, how this, this problem was going to get solved. I don't know. I want it to be an easy evening. I want to feel good. Da, 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 da. Okay. That's all I thought about is what I wanted to feel like. Um, and he came over and he got what he was picking up and he said, Hey, I'd stay for dinner, but I've got something else to go do. Huh, how about that? You know, yeah. how about that? Yeah, that was a problem that was solved. He's never done that before. OK, so it just goes to she's always stays for dinner, but it's OK. Right. And so he left happy and we were happy. <laughs> so that is an example. So I wanted that personal situation just resolved. I just couldn't deal with it. Right. And I've done a lot of personal personal situations. Um, but years ago, I, um, this was the same son and same daughter. Okay. We were living next door to each other at the time, my daughter and I, and my son's wife lost her job in South Texas and they were coming. They decided to move back up and move in with me. Okay. She was not too happy about that. Um, but then it was Christmas and we were going on a Christmas trip to Disney, Walt Disney World together. And with my other son and his family, I think there were 13 of us or something. So all I could think of is that she's not talking to him. She's not talking to me much. She's so angry that he's here. And I did one, one command after another about how that trip was going to be amazing. So I kept focusing on the end result, which is all getting along. We had several meals, dinners in restaurants planned. They would all go smoothly, da, 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 da. Well, we got on this trip and it's, do you know, it's the best trip we've ever had to Disney. And at one point in time, uh, my grand, my grandson needed a special pass to ride rides um, because he had anxiety. My other grandson has um, Down syndrome and he would run away from the line. So my son's son and my daughter's son had special passes. Would you know that my other son, so I have twin sons, my other son walks up with his son and says, Connor and I, the one with the pass, and his son, Brack, we're going on this ride over here and we're not going to use that cheat pass. I went, oh, that's going to start World War III. Both my son and daughter that had the passes, they looked at each other, they laughed and said, well, let him go through it. You know, they didn't care. It was water oh. off their back. I promise you, yeah. those things happened on that trip because of all the work I put into everybody having a good time. So those are some real good examples. I love that. So yes, I hope people truly put this into play because, you know, it really can be heaven on earth. We can experience, I love how Abraham Hicks says, you can have, be, do anything you desire in this lifetime. Yes. When you get out of your own way. Yes. Well, you know, <laughs> question for you. What do you believe is a key takeaway you want listeners to get? I really want them to mind their thoughts, right? We've been talking about that almost this whole um, podcast. It's like, keep your thoughts clean. Mm -hmm. And the more you do that, the, the easier it will actually get, right? So the, the very bottom line is think about what you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't think about what you don't want. Think about what you want. And if you if you take that thought and go live your life, Something's going to come up and you're going to think about what you don't want, but you're going to remember what I'm saying and you're going to stop, say, cancel that thought and yep. turn it around into what you want. Uh -huh. Yep. We're planting seeds. 
<laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'd love to wrap up the interview. So I have a couple of rapid fire questions. Yes. What is a quote or motto that you live by? Um, it's, it's my own quote. It's balance your life and live it. Love that. Mm -hmm. What is a book you're currently reading or highly recommend? It is Napoleon oh, yeah. Outwitting the Devil. So good. And that's, he it's talks about an undisciplined mind is our biggest problem. Yes. 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 The tools of the devil are fear, procrastination, anger, and jealousy right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Such a good book. <laughs> yes. All right. Final question. What advice would you give your younger self? My younger self is, is, um, basically that, you know, if you put your mind to it, all of life comes to you with ease and joy and glory. So get, get out, get out of the chaos, the frustration, the anger, and just live your best life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Such a great note to end on. Alita, thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. Loved it. <laughs>